Hi and welcome to Character Design Tips Part 2. Today I'm going to give you tips on constructing your character, making it more solid, adding a little bit of anatomy, uh, how to think about that sort of thing, and not get too um, noodly about it. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on The Simpsons Television Show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years now. I take a lot of figure drawing classes and there's a reason why when it comes to drawing a human figure, Drawing the human figure over and over and over in a figure drawing class helps immensely. Uh, it becomes less of a mystery. Uh, you do it so often and you mess up so much that it takes away the pressure of drawing the figure. Uh, you, 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 you start to become, uh, you start to have a shorthand. And uh, so it really does help to go and figure draw as much as possible. I've been doing it for over 20 years and I'm still not a master at it. There's so much left to learn. It's always challenging. It never gets easy. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to go over some of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, last week we talked about gesture and capturing the essence of a pose. Today I'm going to be talking about constructing and solidifying your drawing. I'm not going to touch too much on anatomy. What I'm actually going to be talking about is the foundations from which you should draw your finished drawing. The foundations of your construction. When constructing, less is more. Simplify something as complicated as the human body into basic three-dimensional shapes. Be clear about the direction of your body parts. When, uh, so like for example, the perspective. When adding more advanced shapes on the simple shot, on the simple parts, make sure that they reinforce the direction. Uh, by direction, I mean the direction of the form that you've already given it. So if a body part is coming towards you, make sure that when you put more forms on top of it and make a more compound, complicated form, that they reinforce the direction that you've already established with your simple body parts. Any surface detail on the final drawing should also reinforce the direction of the form. So uh, to see all this stuff, um, see Steve Houston's figure drawing uh, videos for simple ways to construct a human torso, video five, part one. I'm going to talk about Steve Houston's video right now. There is online on YouTube, uh, Steve Houston lectures uploaded by uh, my ex-girlfriend. I shot these videos with permission from Steve in one of his classes at his workshop in his house. I recorded them. My ex-girlfriend put it online per my request. She got permission from Steve to put them online so you could actually watch his lectures. Now, one of the lectures I highly recommend is this particular lecture. And the reason why is because Steve is going to talk about the torso here and he's going to explain how to break it down in such a way that uh, it's easy for uh, it, it's painless it, it's a painless uh, way so this is actually the formula that I use to make torsos is this um, and he's explaining about the the bumps and the making balls and things like that so you could actually see um, him explain uh, all these things, how to how to how to break down a torso so that so that it could it could bend and move and do what you want it to do. And here's his formula for making a torso and uh, making it easy to have some kind of perspective on the um, on uh, the figure. Okay, so I'm going to provide a link to this video in the description of this video. And uh, so you could actually watch this lecture. I highly recommend it. It is insanely good. Uh, this is the kind of uh, figure drawing uh, instruction that I got. Um, the, the only problem with this is that you get all the instruction but none of the practice. Uh, usually what we would do is we would hear him lecture, then we'd do it, and he'd go around and show us where we were missing the point, how we could improve our drawings personally. So what you're not getting is the personal instruction 
the hands-on instruction. Uh, you're not getting the actual practice of figure drawing that we got when we took this class. But the information here is in, is invaluable. So I highly recommend you take you, you take a look at this video. Okay, so in this case, we are taking a drawing by Andrea, who drew this character very it's very lightly here, represented. But she drew this character, and it's very well drawn. But we're going to try to solidify the drawing. Now, if we take a look at Andrea's work, she did do some construction work on this figure. We could see her thinking in a, approaching this figure, and it is very, very good um, that she's thinking through these things. Uh, I could see that she's got this kind of skeleton uh, line uh, figure, stick figure thing going on here to guide her in the joints. That's one way of doing it. One way that I've actually never uh, understood myself and uh, always avoided. We see her solidifying her drawing from this basic underdrawing. And then we see her add some definition to her main drawing here so that we can see her construction so that it makes sense. So from here, I'm assuming that the next step was this, that she took this drawing, this, this drawing and then she made adjustments uh, and made a, a more solid body construction. You can see how she's planning out and blocking out her head shapes, which is really, really good. That is very, very good. And then I think that's when she drew over that solid and, and tried solidifying, just trying to fin finesse the body. More adjustments on the body. But uh, generally, I think that the that the the thought process, the way she's approaching the figure, is very good. However, I'm going to give some tips on how to do what she's doing, but simplify it and make it a little bit more uh, understandable. Because what what ends up happening is you run the danger of not quite understanding what's going on. It, even though she did make adjustments, she made adjustments with anatomy. It looks very flat. It doesn't look solid. She superficially placed these muscles, but they aren't on an on actual constructed frames. Her head is much, much, much more solid than her body. I think that the body could benefit from having a solid construction in the same vein as her head construction is. So I'm going to give you some tips to make things a little bit simpler. So we're headed in this direction or in a similar direction to this because now we've got a new pose based off of our reference, which is this up here. Okay, so now that we've got this pose, how do we solidify it? Right now, we do have very flat graphics, which is good because our initial impression, if it reads graphically, it's going to read. Also, we push the, the gesture more so that it, it reads even better because once we start solidifying this, the pose is going to get less and less dramatic. Now, we're going to take the Steve Houston construction and we're going to try to apply it to this in order to solidify this a little bit more. The benefit of doing a very simple underdrawing is that it gives you a template not to steer from, steer away from. It teaches you not to get too lumpy bumpy. So this is already a Steve Houston torso because that's just the way I draw things anyway. We've got the shoulders, we've got the torso front. This line here in the bottom here that I'm drawing is the pubic region. And then we're going to very quickly, as you saw Steve do, we'll do a um, a hip region here, and we're not going to draw a circle. He think 
I'm going to draw what he calls a skirt. And this is kind of like the bullet that goes into it. This here that I'm drawing right here is the hips. It's like the hip joints. Then we've got this. This is the pubic region right here specifically. These are the shoulders. And then we've got the neck going into the shoulders. So what we've got here is a cylinder, a squishy cylinder, one that actually flexes. So we saw that the perspective is going this way, then it turns here, then it's going this way. This is why it's so important to be simple. This is just the lay-in. From here, if we want to get accurate with these arms, and we're, these arms will be cylinders. Right now they're just flat, straight kind of boxes. They just go straight. But if we want, the first thing we got to do is find out where the, um, the peck, are here. In a woman, up the pecs, the breasts come off the pecs. So we'll just do something simple here like this. Now notice that because we drew this line here, now we have perspective on the pecs. I think because I wasn't paying attention here, this is what we're doing. So let me fix that. We have this going on, and then we have to have this here going on. This is the front, and then this is turning away. So this is going on. Now there's probably a corner here that we could add, like like this is the side of this is the side of the of the torso, like this. But here's where I, what I like to do here. Um, from the center of the of the pecs, you can actually make a rhythm that connects and makes the shoulders. Boom. And then from here you could make another rhythm and it goes all the way across. Remember that this this is what we're doing here so and then we make the other rhythm connect to the shoulder. These rhythms are very handy when you want to unify this breast area. So that they look like they're all part of a whole. This is, by the way, not a Steve Houston thing. You'll never see him do this. This is a Riley method thing. But it's a good way to gauge these things. And from this point on, you can put in whatever it is that the breasts are doing, etc. But now you've got shoulders, pecs, breasts, pecs, shoulders. Okay? Then down here, 
this is a corner. And in these corners, there tends to be a pinch. You'll see Steve Houston draw pinches. But what you're basically defining is where these two folds of skin come together. Because this is the stretch. This is the easiest, simplest statement. This is the most complex part of the statement. Now with female arms, they do have muscles, yes, but first let's keep these simple. We're drawing on something simple. Make sure that you draw, when drawing, body parts. Make it simple. This is a cylinder, okay? And yes, you can connect these two like this and have them overlap. And then draw another cylinder. Make sure that there's they taper a little bit, okay? Because we are not robots. Our body parts are not this. Our, our body parts are not this. We are not robots. Most of our body tapers a little bit. Okay? The belly button. Again, this is a tapering cylinder. Right here is where the upper arm is. Usually the top of the, this upper arm and this are about the same size. It's not exact, but it's generally around that. From here to here is actually a little, is about the same size as this to this, like This will just draw, make it a box with the fingers coming off. Hand drawing and construction is a whole different thing. That's just that's its own thing. So far so good. You can indicate a circle here for the rib cage if it helps. But right now it's unnecessary. There is a rhythmical connection between the, the armpit and the crotch. So it's good to check to see if we've got it. It's important because it keeps the drawing unified. So here we've got long legs. There's no divisions. There's no anything. So what we do is we could measure or eyeball where we want the knees to be. And I like to put circles in the knee, where the knee area ought to be. And again, what we're doing here is we're drawing cylinders. So we're connecting these legs come into this skirt that could, if you want, you can make it boxy. Comes into this skirt and they are three dimensional. Okay? Don't forget that this is happening that there is dimension here 
we're using cylinders, very, very basic shapes, so that we can solidify our drawing. I'm not making a robot. My shapes are fluid. They're not abruptly ending in um, in corners. There's no reason for it. Using a little bit of Bridgman construction for the feet. Here too. Bridgman's great for constructing this. Giving you formulas for complex shapes. Okay, and then now we've got the leg. Now that we've got the leg, we could start building because this is all solid if we want we're going to define all the muscles we want to define them on this solid three-dimensional shape now this I turned too forward too much too forward so this should probably be pointing away this way and now this knee is basically a box here and I'm just going to speed this up just to scooch now this comes out from behind here because this is part of the buttocks here There are muscles here. I'm just going to lightly indicate them. But I'm mostly drawing boxes. And I'm trying to make sure that anything that I do, if there's any detail, that it goes and wraps around this solid basic shape and keep let's keep it watery the rhythms here are this way this way then again this way this here goes this way it goes this way this here goes in here and it goes this way so rhythms in the in the body tend to do this they don't do this if you're doing that it's you're getting um, the Michelin man you're getting a snowman you're not getting a human being You can simplify this. So I'm doing this here, this way, this way, this way. And this one's going that way. See, so this is the rhythms that we're working with. And the upper arm is pretty much the same way. You can make a ball here. You could put a boxy upper arm here. Um, the hand can be broken down into a very simple box that where you could attach stuff to. Um, so every single part of the body 
can be broken up into boxier shapes. But what I want to emphasize here, and here's this muscle here, what I want to emphasize when working on a human body is to, to give yourself a simple, solid foundation. Don't get too noodly and part of the reason why I even, I'm bringing any of this stuff up is because as solid as um, Andrea's construction was trying to be, there wasn't any confirmation of space of perspective here is this are we looking up at this are we looking down at this is this folding uh, this this shape is way too complicated there's no reason for the it, just simplify it simple shapes instead of lumpy bumpy shapes um, this could have been one tapered tube the way that I did it instead of of all the all the lumpy bumps, all the extra de unnecessary details. You could add the details later, sparingly. If it's not working, get rid of the details. You want as as simple a statement as you can get, so that when you draw the the body and the torso and everything it's 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 manageable there isn't a whole lot of starts and stops um and when you put the final line on top it isn't vague it, it it has it has form your your any final line that you put ought to be descriptive of the construction that you used I ought to explain uh where the the solidity is um, this is a lot better of course but it ought to explain uh, the 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 forms better so when you finally get to the final drawing uh, you have a direction uh, all the, the I can't tell based off of this construction where whether or not um, this arm is 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 moving in space this way or moving in space this way because it's not defined i can under i can tell that there's a corner in this torso here but i can't tell if we're looking up at the breasts or down at the breasts um here i can't tell if if we're if if where where's the perspective we didn't get any of this stuff and we've got all these these lumpy bumps without any actual definition if something is if we're looking down at something there should be an overlap so we could see overlapping shapes here do you see what I'm saying this this defines and clarifies uh, where things are, where, uh, what direction, what's, what's overlapping what, um, what shapes are, because overlapping shapes are what, what diff, what give the, the details of the body their definition. But if you haven't worked out all this construction, then it's very difficult to tell the three-dimensional aspects of the body. So here's what what I what I've drawn, and then yeah, you could go in and start really defining it. You could get Bridgman, and very lightly put in the definitions and all the muscles etc etc of the body so that you also can understand what's going on but she's not made out of all kinds of muscles I mean uh, she's not really buff so her skin is very is um, 
defines her muscles, but her muscles are very subtle. Okay, and I'm not talking about the face here because I think Andrea's face construction is very solid, so I'm not really going to define the face in this video or even in the next because I think that Andrea is starting to get the whole idea of, of the face construction. But the body construction is just as solid and, and just as important. Okay? So again, take a look at that Steve Houston video. It will give you a lot of really good tips. Um, and as I have here, I've given you some good tips on rhythms of the breasts so that you can start uh, designing them. And I think Steve Houston also talks about uh, breasts and details and, and, and showing perspective using the chest, stuff like that. Um, w depending on, on the position of the chest, how, how, what the details ought to be for. What details are actually about rather than, look, I'm just going to put details everywhere. Um, details are important because they define the forms. If you also want a little bit more on the rhythms and gesture, uh, you could go to the drawing website and you can take a look at um, some of the lessons I've got here. And one of the things that I do talk about is creating compound forms. On the website, you can find uh, two lessons on forms. One, when I just talk about basic, basic forms, which are just spheres, cylinders, cubes, and wedges. And mastering these because everything you draw is made out of these very, very basic, basic forms. If you have not mastered these forms, you need to master them. You need absolutely to do so because once you start getting into much more complex objects and people, that's when these forms become compound forms. You make combinations of these forms to make very complicated, much more complicated characters, but they're all made up of the same basic forms. They're just put together in such a way that they look much more complicated. And if once you're doing these complex forms, the mastery of the basic forms are very important because eventually that's where you're headed. You're just basically making these complicated forms. Um, and when you stitch these complicated forms together, because it starts off really basic, and then you could add more detail on them to really make it solid and to solidify your figure. Do you see what I'm saying? So you start off very basic, just tubes, and on top of those tubes you can you could add more complexity, but because you have the foundation of these tubes, all the forms that you create on top of these tubes have a direction, have a perspective, and there's no difference between that lesson and what I'm doing here. Okay, so now that you've, uh, let's recap everything that we talked about. Okay, so when constructing, uh, we're constructing and solidifying your drawing, less is more. When simplify something as complicated as the human body into basic shapes, let's just, so after you get your gesture, add basic shapes on top of it. C uh, cylinders uh, are probably the most common because of the arms and the legs and the torsos can all be broken down into a cylinder. Make sure that your basic shape has direction. If it's bending midway, make sure you clearly show that it's bending midway, etc. Be clear about the direction of your body parts. When adding more advanced shapes on the simple parts, make sure to reinforce they reinforce the direction. So uh, the basic shapes reinforce the direction you've already established on your simple body parts. Any surface detail on the final drawing should also reinforce the direction of the forms. So details for detail sake is there, there's no there's really no point. Even when you're drawing um, details of anatomy, m putting muscles in. The, uh, yeah, sure, put them in, but make sure that the lines reinforce the direction that the body shape is going in. 
if it does not reinforce that direction, just leave it out. Leave it out. Just kind of imply that it's there, but just leave it out because it's going against th- uh, the simplicity and the statement you're trying to make about the direction the form is going. And uh, see Steve Houston's figure drawing videos for simple ways to construct a human torso. You uh, you should absolutely do that. Figure drawing is a must. Those videos are there uh, in case you can't take a class. You could at least get the lecture and then uh, and then just practice at home. Uh, using uh, photos but uh, yeah you need to practice you need to practice this stuff and Steve Houston has some really good things to say about drawing the figure okay so that's it for me today I hope you got a lot out of this the links to the websites and the videos that I talked about are going to be in the description below this video if you found value in this video may I suggest uh, you return value for value by becoming a patron over at my patreon website for a dollar a month you can get early access to all the videos which tend to be about a month ahead of time you'll get early access to all the videos as i make them when i make videos in bulk you get the whole entire series Uh, you don't have to wait for me to slowly upload them over the once a week and you're supporting me and encouraging me to make even more videos on top of that my patrons get first dibs on any answers to any questions that they ask so I answer questions from anybody on the internet it doesn't matter who they are however if you're a patron I go out of my way to answer your questions first to make your videos first and you get to see your videos pretty much right away you don't have to wait and that's only one of the many benefits of becoming a patron and that's only for a dollar a month so thank you so much for uh watching and i will see you next time all right bye